Jello peoples. How's everyone doing? I'm here. Anyone coming in? Anyone want to make a comment? There you go. What's up, John Young? How's it going? Hello. It'll be an exciting day today because I picked up a lot of crap. Some people will be joining me. So until then, what's up, uh, Paul? A lot of excitement. A big, giant, huge, giant stack of records. Gigantic. But this is from everything I've picked up since Sunday. It's a lot of killer, no filler stuff. Some really kick-ass stuff. So, yes, we're all good. Had a little minor uh, emergency at work, so I was dealing with that. I can't, I had, okay. You know, I think Loki, it seems like over the last bunch of months, you've regressed as a person. But I don't know. What's going on, Matthew? Um, I hope everyone's having a good uh, Thursday. That's what today is, right? Yes. How how are we all doing? Jazz Bomb Mike's going to join me in a second, but he's dealing with a family thing. <coughs> so, and some other people are supposed to join. Um, someone else I just texted. Let me just respond to them. La da dee, la da da. There you go. Okay. Um. There, here, here comes. Now I apologize for what this person might be saying. Yeah. Hey, what's up? I hope, I hope there's no children watching this today. No minors. I don't think there's children watching this any day. It's good. You know, by, uh, method. All right, I wanted to highlight this one. Oh, did you listen to any of them yet? I'm I'm glad they arrived in good condition. You also got a copy of Jim's Record Collector News. There's no good light shining on you. Talking to me? Uh, uh oh, Matt. I just got a message from Masloff. Let me let me send Masloff a link. Maybe we can get a picture from driving. Hold on. Bing. There you go. We'll see. We'll see what happens there. Maybe we'll see him driving. Maybe he got a fare. Maybe he picked up a hitchhiker. Oh, someone came for your duck. Zeb. Oh. The, that's oh. the good. By the way, that's the good Zeb. There, there, there is a good Zeb as opposed to a bad Zeb. Good Zeb. The duck stopped laying. She, so she is ready for a Peking duck. She is, in what fact, a Peking you, duck. How old, how old is the duck? She's about four, five. When do ducks stop being tender enough to eat? I have no clue. Have you eaten a duck egg? Oh, yeah. Yes, I have. They're giant. They're huge. I'm trying to think if there was some sort of announcement today that I should be aware of talking. Well, we here, I'll, I'll, it's story time with Uncle Rob. Here's story time with Uncle Rob. So um, there's two OJ stories. Which OJ story do you want to hear? Oh, my goodness. One is a very short story, and it's related to actual orange juice. If anyone follows um, Blue, uh, Blue Note Record Spinners, Bill, who sometimes comes on the Jazz Bomb stream, I've uh, struck up a little tiny friendship with him, and I sent him a couple of records as VCLT. If you go to um, – I'll pull up his uh, Instagram – and I'll post a link to it in the in the chat so you, everyone can go follow him because he's a good follow. So uh, Blue Note uh, rec Vinyl. So his account is Blue Note Vinyl Spinners. This is his account. Blue Note Vinyl Spinners will come in. There he is. Blue Note Vinyl Spinners. So if you follow him, typically his his posts are very nice. He'll post jazz records, and he'll put a cup of coffee there. 
with the, the blue note and coffee. So he sent me a note thanking me for the records. And I go, no problem. But he kept going, no, thank you. And I go, can you thank me some more? And he thank you. And I go, well, here's what I would like you to do as a thank you. For one time, I'd like you to change your beverage to orange juice. Look what he did. He put an <laughs> orange juice. You're amazing. Right, that's, that's my one OJ story. I have a second OJ story related to OJ. And I think I've told this story on different versions of this story online before. When I moved to L.A. in 1993, I, I lived in Brentwood, the famous Brentwood in Los Angeles. And I um, went through a bunch of L.A. things all in the first six months I lived there. When I first got to L.A., it was raining. I don't know if you remember in 93, it rained horribly kind of like it has in the past year, just endless rains and all the famous things you hear about LA, mudslides and all that stuff. Then I got home late from work in an ill-conceived decision that my roommate, who was my cousin going to UCLA, said, oh, get a waterbed. You'll love it. I get a waterbed and I get home late from work and go to bed and then a freight train drives right through the middle of my apartment, which was the North Ridge earthquake. I was thrown from one side of the room to the other. That was a good and, earthquake. And if you remember, we had horrible aftershocks for at least four days afterwards, right? Then um, we lived in Brentwood. We turned on the TV, and there was a high-speed chase with a Bronco, white Ford Bronco. Low speed. Well, whatever. We run outside as they get to the sunset exit, I believe, which I lived sandwiched between kind of sunset and San Vicente or, or um, Wilshire on this block on Barrington, which is a big street in Brentwood. And we run outside as the car, uh, the Bronco gets off the freeway and the helicopters are flying all overhead. That was my first six months in L.A. But that's the OJ story. So two OJ stories for the price of one. 93 was a good year. Yeah, I know. That's why I told the story. My uh, OJ story is I worked across the street from the courthouse, and I got to watch the circus every day that was outside the courthouse. Just people dressed up like maniacs and trying to get on camera. Hold on. Hold on. Loki, is it insensitive to tell stories about orange juice? Or O.J. Simpson. We're remembering O.J. Simpson in whatever light he deserves to be remembered in. We have no sensibilities, so how can we be insensitive? Yes, it's all stories. Look, part of the part of being old is is the stories we've accumulated, and we dispense to other people. That's right. I remember when I was a little girl, I mean a little boy. <laughs> yeah, how many murders have you come across in your life? I used to walk my dog past the La Bianca house when I was a little kid just to scare myself. I actually had a knew a guy who was part of a famous missing persons case. This That's was about 5 or 6 years ago. There was a Fox Studio executive who went missing. It was national news. It was all over the place. I knew that dude because he was a distribution executive and they were required to be at all the test screenings to see if they would spot any movie theater people coming into the test screenings. They were really worried about that, like people from the theater chains, because they would know about a movie before it was released and they wouldn't book it or something like that. So I talked to that dude all the time. He used to he played basketball for the famous um, uh, coach at uh, UCLA. Um, uh, Wooden? Wooden. He played for Wooden. Wow. Tall, good-looking guy. Very cool. Very nice to talk to. But then he went missing, and no one knew what happened to him. And then maybe a year or two later, they found his dead body. And then they found out it was the ex-husband of a woman he was sort of dating. That's right. the 
that's the only other kind of sorted story I had direct connection to. I have about four murder stories I could tell uh, one at a time, or should I mix it? Wait, is there is that such a thing, Paul? For black is that like is sure. there a strict need that go get get me the serial killer lawyer? Did how many different serial kill? Uh oh. Speaking of serial killers, I just wanted to have I just wanted to see if we could get three Jews on at once. Wow, we're working on a minion. Where, where exactly are you at right now? I'm about. A half hour, 35 minutes into Eugene, Oregon. I'm staying in Eugene, Oregon tonight. Oh, well, nice. Hey, my nephew's there. My nephew goes to the University of Oregon. Well, I'm, exhaust right. I'm exhausted. I left at uh, 7.30 this morning. I stopped a bunch, but I'm going into Portland tomorrow to have lunch with Joe. So, yeah. nice. a a friend I, just I, I just listened to a, an old podcast of the, of the Jazz Bums talk about Miles... Davis, Mofis, and uh, from last year, I guess. And now I'm here listening to you. But yeah. You're not saying it, but you're not saying anything. I don't have. A, I just talked about my, my O.J. Simpson stories. I don't. I don't have an. Did someone Simpson. say jazz bums? Uh -huh. <laughs> I did say jazz bums. <laughs> What's up? Hey, Mike. Hey, how's it going? <clears throat> All right. Well. What's what's going on record wise? Okay, I would like to say that a friend of mine has just opened a record store in Ashland, Oregon. You didn't happen to go to Ashland on your way up, did you? It's kind of far I, off the freeway. Oh my God! I stayed Ashland on the way down. Oh, his, I just found out today. Well, what's that the name of it? What's the name of the store? Um, Shattered Records. But I was there. Like I didn't get in till five or six. And I left at six the next morning, so I, you know, I'm sure it was closed. I didn't know. I just anyway, yeah. Cool. cool. Is it called Shakespeare Records? That's the Shakespeare Festival. I know, and they have the best water in the world there. You know, they're very proud of their water. They should call it a horse, a horse, a kingdom for a record. This this yes. this, is like, this is a typical two old guys having a conversation about water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. I have, I literally have a stack this high of records I've picked up. So, well, start up showing them. All right. Mazzy, do you have any OJ stories? <laughs> no. no you my, have any OJ my, my only, my first, my first time I ever went to LA with my parents, we went to Disneyland and we arrived in Hollywood. We we're on Hollywood Boulevard and the radio was on. And the, the first thing I remember on the radio, they said that Marilyn Monroe had, had died. So that was my celebrity story of L.A. Wow. That's all I to do with O.J. And so. when they did the autopsy, she had a bunch of orange juice in her system. Yeah, well, I, would think I was probably, how old was I? What was that, 61, <laughs> 60, 62 she died or something? My cousin went to a medical school at USC, and uh, one of the cadavers they worked on was Walt Disney. No, I thought kidding. he was frozen. No, they... Uh, I'm just kidding. It wasn't really. All right. I'm going to start showing records, okay? So I went on Sunday to the Pasadena <clears throat> Flea Market with Jim. That's probably one of the be best places to pick up records, uh, I feel. And uh, I picked up a bunch of good records. Um, I don't know if anyone's heard of this record, this uh, Lewis Hayes group, Variety is no. Spice. Nope. You got, you got <sighs> your Frank Stroller. Strolzer, who's a sax uh, player. Strazier. What uh, what label? What label is that? This is on uh, Warfion Productions. Does Phil Woods have a title on that? He has he has something called like. Um, I think he does. I think I've seen that one. It's called. Um, God damn it! I see it all the time. So he, here's who's on here: Harold Mayburn, Cecil McBee, Leon Thomas does. His typical Leon Thomas singing on it. Okay, Actually, it's not annoying. I thought it was fine. It's like but Sisyphus. I think the Phil Woods is like something Sis Sisyphus. Well, that's a, the direct to disc one, right? All oh, right. Okay, that's what I'm picking up. Okay, but this uh, it's not a bad record. It's uh, pretty um, modal type of jazz stuff. 
So that's in shrink. Is it a gatefold? Yeah, it's a gatefold, but I haven't pulled the shrink off. Oh, nice. Cool. You going to do it? So, I'm not going to rip it off. I'm not doing a Mazzy. Oh. Let's see. The first time this oh, gatefold has seen <laughs> light in, in 50 years. <laughs> you just left, let molds, left mold spores <laughs> enter your house. Every time I get a rec every time I get a record from you, Mazzy, that happens. Don't forget to show him the Jane's addiction. You, you know, swear. Yeah, I have to say, every record I have of Roy Haynes, he's a very dapper dresser. Um, where's Where's the Jane's addiction you snagged? Yeah, I, it's somewhere. I sold really it somewhere. How do I pay for these records, dude? You know, I here's, saw here's a white. Label. I saw a white label uh, promo of Pete Jolly yesterday for 250 bucks. <laughs> I saw that. I saw that in your video. That's a um, that was a great wall he had. Where was that at? Well, what was the record? Which record? Uh, the, the the one, the Pete Jolly record. The, the one with the, one. the gold, that gold. Oh, you know, which store? His, his great his uncle, his great uncle was Orrin <laughs> Pete News, the guy that owns that record store. So is oh, he selling right. yeah. part of his collection? He yeah. had some, he's been there. He he's been there before. I remember because he has. This, I don't know he, if there's he any has, left. He has those two turntables to his side, and then he has a. Last time you were there, he had a killer wall of jazz too. Yeah, and he's got that other little okay, store we'll that's brand new. That other little store is brand new. Yeah. What at, what were the, the what were the prices on things like? He had, he had a bunch of stuff behind him. What were the prices besides that Pete Jolly? There were, I mean, Do you remember? God, I don't. Um, I think there was some miles that were like seventy-five to a hundred, some more, one hundred fifty. Okay. It depends. I mean, different prices. But you know, he has a lot of new stuff, new reissues like the OJCs and regular price stuff. Uh, a lot of good rock stuff. The, he had those Thirteenth uh, uh, Floor Elevator records. I, I didn't. Even, I forgot what those were. But. He, was, he was hating on that Three Blind Mice record, which. Which everybody likes to hate on. Sorry, Rob. <laughs> hey, Mazzy, I don't come, know up, what the Mazzy come on the Jazz Bumps tomorrow and tell us about your trip. Okay. Okay. I'm going to listen offline. All, All right. right. We'll drive, 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 drive safe. Yes. All right. Here's another one I picked up at the. I'm not taking the shrink off of this one. This is John Hicks in concert on Teresa. He is playing with Walter Booker. Idris Muhammad and Elise Wood on flute, and it's good. It's a good concert. Well, hold on, you mi you missed the special guest. Oh yeah, Bobby Hutchison. Sorry, yep. he's, he's on there on vibes. That's cool. it's good. You know, sounds good. Yep. Nothing exciting, just regular. You know, I, I you know I have a bunch of John Hicks records. I never feel like they're anything crazy. You know. Yeah. All right. Do you have any this, other Do you have any other Teresa records? Yeah, Pharaoh Sanders. I oh, think yeah. I have another. That's an, Teresa isn't that record. one pretty expensive on Teresa or no? Well, I have Pure Pleasures done a bunch of reissues of Teresa. So there's the Pharaoh Sanders live in concert. Yep. I have the original single disc, yep. and when Pure Pleasure put it out, they had more material. It's two LPs. And John Hicks has a has a definitely has a studio album with the red cover. I've seen I've seen that come up and he has, it says on the back here some other Teresa records. Joe Mar Joe Marino I think has that. And Joe Marino I think is I think he collects. He might be interested in that if you're looking to get rid of it because he's, no. he's into yeah. So you got Journey to the One, Rejoice. I have. Uh -huh. Seems like Ferris Sanders did a lot yeah. of Teresas. Yeah, John, Hicks, John Hicks, lots of John Hicks. <laughs> what the hell is that? That is just gorgeous. Well, Jim, Jim, pay attention to this. Jim is live streaming on two live streams right now. Yeah. Let me let me mute him. What what's going on over there, dude? Who are you talking to? We're hearing feedback from you. What did you turn oh, really? on? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Pay attention, Jim. God I'm damn it. talking about balls. What's going on, dude? <laughs> oh, that's what are you good. watching? That's not good. <laughs> There's balls going on. Oh, this, I, 
this was in a 50 cent bin in beautiful pure near mint condition i don't understand it so do you know the story about red garland mike what which one? Oh yeah that he, he stepped away for a little bit and came back he went home to take care of his mom okay and he for 10 years nine or ten years so he came, made a came back he did this first for MPS he did two MPS records this is a kick-ass record I suggest it's not expensive you should pick this up here who's here's who on here who's on here with them you got Jimmy Heath they're doing the uh, quota. I know uh, Lenny Mc, McBrown, but I do not Peck Morrison. I don't know him. Yeah, but I know you, Peck, Peck Morrison's on bass, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, He's. I have some of his stuff. I believe the both albums is this grouping, but Jimmy Heath kicks ass on this. But this is a really good album. So after, after nine years of taking care of his mama, he went back to record it. Yeah, Peck Morrison plays with Dave Bailey on some killer stuff. He plays with Lou Donaldson. He's on a bunch of stuff. Yeah, okay. Um, this It's all mixed together. So uh, Mike Nosatone sent me a couple records. I exchanged records with him. And he sent me this uh, Ghost Trees record, Universal Topics. Yeah, I got that. that. I got that. This is very good. It's, oh, no, I'm uh, sorry. I got, the, I got the new one, the new one that came out. It's very um, avant-garde. Yeah. Boarding on free jazzy. It's good. Yeah. I don't know these two people. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's the that's the group. And I guess they have a few different titles. I have the recent one. I listened to it and uh, it's cool. I mean, it's like, yeah, I mean, I guess you could say it's like free, um, you know, it's but not, it's more improvisational. It's not crazy stuff. It's not crazy. Yeah. No, that's good. OK, back to the uh, flea market finds. This was a killer find. Uh, okay. This is an, an OG mint copy. What year is that? 56. Woo! Oh, I don't know. Wait. Love those old. Let, let's see the label. Is it Deep Groove and all that? It is Deep Groove Verve. Nice. Oh, with the trumpet. Nice. So this is Sonny Stitt playing the arrangements of Jimmy Jufri. And uh, here's Jack Shelton, Frank Rossiano. Frank Rosalino. Rosalino, whatever. They're all the same. Buddy Clark. It's good. This It sounds... These old verbs and the clef records usually sound great if you find them in nice condition. Jim, do you know the story of Frank Rosalino? No, tell me. Did he murder someone? Yeah, he, I, murdered, his, he murdered his family. He did? Yeah, he's a trombone player. He killed every he killed his whole family. Or I don't know if the, he attempted to kill them at least. I'm pretty sure he killed them all. Yeah, he's a nutcase. I always suggest that you should have records with murder. And I, don't, I don't mean and I don't mean to be um dismissive of mental health issues because obviously he had them, but you know, pretty cool. pretty crazy dude. When did he do it? In the sixties? I, I don't know. Let us know in the comments below. Loki, go investigate it. I found a, this is uh, the first part, the uh, two parts to this ESP disc. The Yeah, Hellion Centric Worlds of Sun Ra Volume 1. That was originally, yeah, ESP disc. I I know that with a different, with a black and white cover. So, okay, oh, that's so yeah. there's, I've picked up several of these Italian early reissues on this base records. They sound pretty good. This sounds really good. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what sources they were. I think there's no date on this one because it does have this tax stamp. I don't know if that makes a difference. I don't but know. Uh, this one sounds good. These these bass, I guess they're nine early 90s, maybe. That sounds good. Yeah. So. <clears throat> All right. I found... That, no, I've shown this before. <laughs> All right, I found this steeplechase record at the flea market. This is uh, Frank Foster, the mm. house that Love built. And it has a nice lineup on there. Horse parlance on steeplechase, <laughs> and it sounds good. 
Mm -hmm. Nothing crazy. But if you find these original steeplechases, buy them. They're really well recorded and they sound great. Do you have any take on this? I have the that one Frank Foster on Blue Note. That's good. No take on it. I think I have a Horace Parlin on Blue Note. I can't remember. He only put a few out because I think <clears throat> he passed away shortly after his like second uh, title. Who? On Steeplechase, Horace Parlin. Horace Parlin put out like 10 Steeplechase records, maybe more. He was oh. a side man on. Put out a lot. Yeah. I don't know when he died, but he has at least lead. There's like 10 Horace Parlin records. I have several of them. Mm -hmm. But okay. Oh, I think I might be thinking of Walter Bishop Jr. Actually, and then I don't even yeah. know if he. Yeah, he, he did. He put out. He put out two steeplechase. All right, I. This is the second time I've owned this record. I think I sold it the first time. This is um, this was originally on steeplechase, but this is the U.S. inner city uh, issuing of it. Yep. Um, the one there. This is a good record. It's. I wouldn't say. At least this version, the inner city sounds great. It seems weird. Side two sounds better than side one, but I think the reason I sold it is on side one. There's a song where both of them sing together, and they really shouldn't have done that. <laughs> it just sounds like two guys who got drunk and were like singing the same song together. Interesting. But other than, I mean, this is probably them when they got drunk and sang the song, but other than that, it's good. I think the review of it by that great reviewer, the Scott Yarrow, kind of yeah. says that they never mesh well together. But this is a good record. I think the prices on this record are weird. Either you find it pretty cheap or people try to... I paid 12 bucks for this at the flea market. But there's a record store I go to all the time who's trying to sell for 40 bucks. It's because Gary Bartz is on it. Yeah. I think don't pay a lot for this record is my point. Yeah. Okay. Um, what, what's up, Matthew Petty? Do I look like crap? I'm trying to fix my internet because the I'm trying to hook a router up to it. That seems to work. So just deal with it. I'm sorry. No, no, not you. I think he's saying the record. No, the record looks fine. Yeah. Look, I I I really try to stay away from buying anything less than VG plus, especially for auctions, but also for myself, unless it's something rare. Something that's horribly rare, or I get it really cheap. Okay, Jazz Bum Mike sent me some VCLT. Oh, yeah. yeah. In my war to, out of spite, to collect all of the Pablos that Chad is reissuing, <laughs> he sent me the Art Tatum one. Yeah. And you know what? Big surprise. It sounds really good. Yeah. So... Go pay ten bucks for this record, or I actually saw this. I at think the, that one that one might be more expensive online. Though. Well, yeah, I was at the flea market and they had one for fifteen bucks, and and I knew you were sending me this one, so I didn't buy it. Yeah, so, let me see what it goes for online. And he left the old price sticker from Jacks. Oh yeah, I bought that after um when uh when Chad did that initial Pablo video like a year ago. Yeah. I bought that and the alternate blues right away, and I got them for well, good prices. I'll talk about this maybe now. Chad just did a new video where he's recommending jazz records, which I think means in a year he'll be reissuing all of them. <laughs> so the best piece that I got from that video was the Louis Armstrong King Oliver. Oh, yeah. I did not know it was issued under two different titles. So it, And he misspoke in the video where he said one title was the best of the um, greatest hits of Louis Armstrong. It's the best of Louis Armstrong. And I found a near mint copy for $6 on Discogs. And it's that audio fidelity label, which yeah. I can attest. If you find a really clean copy of those, they sound really good. Well, that's I what I was going to ask you. Like, how, like when you get that in, I'm curious to know how that sounds. Well, I have, so here's the, my, Reasoning. I have that Bill Barron record with Ted Curson. Yeah. I had I found a mint stereo copy of the record without the cover. I went to the flea market last time and found a mono copy of it, borderline VG VG plus. Yeah. 
and it's on the same record label, the stereo sounds much better than the mono. Is this what you bought? That is what I bought. I actually bought the the. It's a different color label. Different but color. I got, I got the stereo version. Okay, I wanted to see. I want to see chats because I want to see on the back who actually owns Audio Fidelity now. Um, let's see. So that's analog. Yeah, there it is. Um, here we go. So this one. Oh, there's no back on it. Damn it! I have a copy. It's just in the other room. Well, you go uh, go to oh, some. Yeah. Go to okay. audio. Go to Analog Production selling it, and those don't they show the back or no? No, this is. I don't think they even have it in stock anymore. Pretty sure they don't. This well, is goes. Yeah, look, it goes for two hundred bucks now. Yeah. Can you go back to all the listings of it so we can say the other ver uh, title? It's it's something. What do you want to say? The other title. So it goes under the best of. Okay, the so the so the first pressing is Satchmo plays King Oliver, and then, yeah. well, let me just sort by U.S. at least. So I'm sorry. Give me a second. U.S. and then L.P. Okay. So Satchmo and then the jelly roll. Oh yeah, that's the one he says. Well, it is. It's there. He said jelly roll, and then uh -huh. the one above it, the best of Louis Armstrong. Okay. And let's I just see. don't want to. I just don't want to own a record that says jelly roll on it. Uh, so there's one copy for over yeah, but that, I did go through all of them that. I bought mine near mint for six dollars. Okay. So go look at all of them. I'm sure the, they pressed it all the freaking time. All right, here we go. That's, oh, those are the parts he probably used from Cosmo. Oh, Hold on, I don't want to see this. So that you can get for a hundred. I want to see. Oh, not that. Sorry. Let me know if you want me to move on. I just hey, wanted to see hey, War Eagle. War Eagle. I think he thinks that wet record's too weird for him. That Chico Freeman. Which one? Where did he say? Uh, where Eagle says that he might, he's going to reissue Spirit Sensitive, but yeah, he is. I mean, I have that was like one of the first records Chad did, so I have. No, he heard. is. He is. Yes. He literally he he emailed me about it just like a couple of weeks ago. Okay. What is yeah. what is Jim? Jim, what are you trying to show? You're muted. You're muted, You're Jim. Muted. Oh, You're Jim has it. You're muted because you're watching porn. Here it is. Okay. <laughs> what do you do? That's you not, everything. But I have I have a white label. Yeah, I, don't know said, I, you I don't know if they're all white label. No. Oh, yeah. the ones are this and this. You, how many copies do you have? Well, no, this is uh, Satchmo Plays King Oliver. It's That's the, the same one. record. One's stereo, one's mono. Which sounds better? I don't know. Show the stereo one again, please. No, no, no. This is the best of Louis. Is that's only, it's the right. same? I, I only have. Hold on. This, these are the same records. Yes. Yeah, that label's really weird. Can you show that white label again on the best of Louis? This doesn't even look it like the other great. one. By the way, people, this I is don't very know odd. All like the, you very know, odd for Jim. Be a reissue. This, it, although it's not, but maybe it is. I don't know. It's well, so okay. Audio fidelity. Oops, sorry. Yeah, no, that's fine. It might be a reissue. I don't know. I paid three ninety nine for it in the year two thousand. All right. So, it, this is Jim's problem. This yes, he has twenty eight versions of every record. I, but I love the way these records on, on this label sound. They just it doesn't matter what they look like; they sound great. It's good to know. So. In my experience, the stereo sound better than the mono, but it probably Could doesn't be. the record. Could be. Okay. It's nice to know you have three copies of that. <laughs> so this looks like the copy you have, except this is not the promo. Yeah. What year what year is that pressing? So I think I clicked on ah, I think sorry. Yeah, it's come on. Sixty four. So this one's 64. Uh, I hold on, let's go back to the guys playing on there. There's one guy's name is good. Peanuts. Peanut, yes. <laughs> let's see what peanuts yeah, is doing. That sounds like a guy they name they make up the name for a, a jazz mockumentary. 
<laughs> Good old peanuts. Pizza. We always said he got his nickname. You know what? You know how he got his nickname? He liked Sorry. peanuts. Look, he was he lived till 85. He was born in 1918. So he's early yeah. guy. Part of the early look, what is this? He became known for like Sinatra. Does it say how he got his nickname? And he plays on the We Small Hours. Fuck yeah. This guy's awesome. And, yeah, you know peanuts. what he's hell yeah. He's playing on know, We Small Hours and Lu and Louis Armstrong. Okay. Hold on. You know what he used to say to Frank a lot? What? Some peanuts, Frank. Look, look, he has a he has a self-title. You guys want to see what this is on Epic? Uh, we have to now. Yes. I hope there's a peanut on the cover. Oh, wait, is it a seven inch? Hold on. Yeah, it's a seven inch. It's just wait, let's see. Wait, what is this? The complete CBS recordings? That's not peanut. Is it a seven inch? That's a little. I mean, it's cool, but it's well, it's a seven inch with 28 songs on it. How long are they? He's got five songs on it. They're each 30 seconds a piece. Oh, hold on. Let me do one. Hold on. Let me just see if I can find this on another title. Well, Aggie, have you listened to have you listened to the original? Any of the original? Who's that? Oh, Aggie. He's just saying that the um analog production sounds incredible. Look, okay. he has a, he, so he has this. This is Rex Stewart and Peanut. Yeah, but that that's from those they're series split. that have the exact same cover. They're splitting it. Oh, Jazz Stone. Wasn't this like a yeah. mail order catalog thing? I don't know, but they all have that same cover. I think it is. Um well, whatever. This guy's cool in my book. I just want to know how he got the name. Look here. He's got some 83 Zodiac stealing apples. Well, that doesn't sound good. You know, I, from what I understand, peanuts would only do things that had food names. Look, Barney Kessel's on this. You got Barney Kessel. Yes. Not too bad. Max Bennett on bass. He's good. Very nice. Earl Palmer on drums. There you go. Yeah. So uh, there you did go. he did he have an album called Medium Rare Steak? Look, you can get the let's see, there's seven copies. One in the United States for 15 bucks. You can get a near mint peanuts. <laughs> I'm gonna but, drop I'm oh, gonna... hold on. Everyone, I believe this is Mike's call for help. When he does a deep dive on a guy named Peanuts. <laughs> I'm dropping it in the in the chat. Yeah, now it looks like it comes Somebody from... Somebody buy this. Come on. 15 bucks. Just get it. <laughs> it's not hey, a good sign. Hey, you know, people in the future are going to be saying, do you remember that time that Mike did a deep dive on a guy named Peanut? <laughs> <laughs> and then wound up buying the guy's record. But he's, on a Benny, he's playing with Benny Goodman, Louis Armstrong. All right, can tell you, the, pe the, pe the Peanuts family can be very proud of his achievements. You know, all I have to say to you, Mike, is wah, 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 wah. hey, I'm ready to show some more records, okay? <laughs> all right. Oh. That's Felipe. I'm certain that's Felipe. Hold on. How do I? Let's there you go. All right. All right. So, this was another record that uh, Notes and Tones sent me. He sent me the new Charles Lloyd record. What? Yeah. He, I think he had, I, he's the guy who accidentally gets two copies of records often. <laughs> so this is really good. It's, I, it's got the shrink on it. I don't want to take it off. Jason yeah. Moran, Larry uh, Gr uh, Grendeder, and Brian Blade. This okay. is good. This is a double album. And it's a uh, very kind of, Spacious spiritual jazz. Who it's played really piano good. when we saw him? Was it Moran? When we saw him, it was I think Clayton. Gerald Clayton. Not Moran. I think we did. I'm pretty sure it was Clayton. This is very good. You just pick it up. All right, here's a good one. Someone, a friend, recommended this record to me. And if there's one record I showed tonight that everyone will 
Mike, you will pick this up because right now it's cheap. But after it's shown on this highly influential stream, this record will be gone. This is a Canadian um, saxophonist, Glenn Hall. I think he self-produced this and he uh, and pressed this. But look who's on here as his backing group. Joanne Brookeen, Billy Hart, and Cecil McBee. So I just got this in the mail today. I bought it off of Discogs. Really good. The, kind of a simple label. So I don't know how it sounds, but I streamed, I did stream it before I bought it. And it's good. You're, you're muted, Mike. How long have you been talking for? There's one copy in the United States right now. Yes. This is it on LP. So I'm going to drop that into the chat if anybody's interested in I'm, checking it out. I'm going to order this because, come on, this backing group, come on, you can't go wrong. This is literally, this is it. So unless you find no, it in the okay. can, we, can you keep that up and we'll check back later in the stream to see how yeah. influential this stream is. Can we sell one record? I yeah. think we're probably going to sell more Peanuts records. Well, before than... we, yeah, hold on. Okay, so let's do a deep dive here. Um, why can't I go back? Come on. Okay, so we got we got some long tracks on side B. They're doing a Wayne Shorter and a Sam Rollins. They do oh come on. Sorry. They're doing uh I guess this is his yeah, Glenn Hall. He's doing these first three tracks, and then the I don't know who this is, Joshua Breakstone, I guess I don't know what that is, but they're doing that, and then on, on side B, they're doing some standards. He plays, so. he plays guitar on this. So that's cool. Um, let's see. Mix that Sierra Pacific Studios, master at Lacquer Channel. Um, recorded 79. Yeah, he plays um, soprano, tenor, bass, clarinet. Yeah, that's he's all over the place. Yeah. But I've str I strained this. It's good. I wonder what the percussion is. Maybe tambourine. Look at this. Look at this. What? Look, somebody should seriously grab this. Look at that shit. So this record, 71 have it, 128 want it. That's a, that's a huge ratio. That's insane that this that there's one available for 15. Let's say refresh oh, wait, it. Did somebody buy it? I think it's out of stock. Who somebody bought it? Who yeah, bought it? Bought. Can you go to the sales? Somebody Can bought it. Sale? I think unless I... Let's say but somebody just bought it right now. 15 bucks. That's it's all. Sealed. So good on you, man. Say, say that for that's me. For it's a it's a fair price, but that is incredible that that many people want this record. Well, why is the price only 15 oh, bucks now? Oh, I don't know. Who's who bought it? Can someone fess up and bought it? When let's see, I want to see the dates real quick. I didn't pay much for this, I think. So fifteen dollars. A I'm lot. So, four, I'm, so already I'm four this year. I bought it on uh, three twenty-seven, I think. Yeah. Hey, I wonder because a lot of these are sealed. I wonder if whoever owns this has a little box of them, and he no, just, it's probably him. Go to, probably just, know, when he, he sells one, he just puts another one up. Yeah. Go to his site. So this might be one to put. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add it to my want list and just keep watching it. Okay, what do you want? Well, you fucking could have bought one, man. Yeah, I know, but I, look, let me tell you, I don't need to buy anything right now. <laughs> okay, I have a stack of records that okay. I'm going to sign them with a bill. Okay, I need to not buy. Okay, them. Now I'm going into records I got today, <laughs> and this is like a killer lineup of records. All right, hold on, on before before you jump in. When you're buying rare records like this, you don't need any more records. Okay. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's nice. I'm not kidding. That is a that is like that is, is like that? a that is like a butcher cover for Frank Sinatra. Yeah, that's a oh, super yeah. rare record. Look, yeah. look, 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 dude. Records, yeah, I here's the deal. Didn't buy them. There's two. Yeah. You know, there's two two prime examples of you losing your mind. <laughs> Doing the deep dive on a guy named Peanuts. And secondly, show that record again. 
Frank Sinatra with a cheesy Italian mustache. <laughs> yeah. He's, prom he's promoting Budweiser, if you can't tell. Is every song on there about Budweiser? This was so so he he won like an Emmy or something for a man in his music and maybe some other stuff. So this was uh, the second a man in his music that I guess Budweiser was sponsoring. So he took uh he basically made a comp just for the Anheuser Busch um employees. So I don't know how many people say there were a thousand made, but who knows? But anyway, it's it's just a rare Frank record. It's pretty cool. I was listening to it earlier. It's pretty cool, but um, but yeah, and it's got it's got a couple of Nancy Sinatra tracks on it. You know, that was a whole genre of of records back in the '60s. These big corporations would have these big parties and make a record. You know, they literally yeah. spend millions on these sales meetings. And it's day. it's an, it's like an official like I mean this this has a reprise catalog number. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, it's like how, a, how, it, how, it's how much was release. that record? How much was that record? This record usually goes from you could. If you're lucky, you can find it for a hundred. It's usually one hundred and fifty to two hundred. How much? I did not pay anything. I haven't seen that record in a hundred years, man. I luck. I I super lucked out with it. Yeah. It look. It looks like Frank has the beginnings of stomach flu on that picture. <laughs> okay. All right. So this is the non-jazz title I picked up today because I've been looking for a copy of this, but um, I picked up an OG US copy, so. Um, this is, I think, a monarch pressing. So I'll, I'll clean it and let people know how it sounds. But I have always been sort of looking. I don't know if there's a decided great sounding copy, if it's probably a UK OG, but this is the first pressing US. Mm. So, all right. No. Very nice. Picked up a, a demo copy of the uh, Jocko album. Very nice. The, I have a copy of this, so one of these is going to end up in the next auction. So there you are. Very nice. Has a little mark on it, but I don't think it's audible. So okay. All right. Next, this is a cool record, and usually you can pick up all Larry Carell stuff really cheaply. But look at the lineup on this one. You got your John McLaughlin, your Chick Corea, your. Roslov, Vitos, and uh, Billy Cottom. So I don't know how this is. Um, seems like he has several Vanguard records, but this this shows you how often I go to record stores. All these records I picked up, I walked into the store, and people were selling this collection to the owner. So he let me go through them after they he bought them. All right, and now <laughs> some uh, Pablo's. Nice. This, uh, Dizzy Gillespie, uh, Afro Cuban album. I think he has a bunch of these on uh, Pablo. It's a big lineup on, on this one. Nice condition. I, I now have three copies of this record, or I think. So maybe somewhat going there. Wait, hold on. Hold on. So that's Ray Brown. That's definitely Ray Brown. And then who is the other gentleman? Is that? I will, hold on. Hold, I will on, hold on. Hold on. Give you a dollar if you can guess who. That is. is that uh, okay? So we have so is it's not a drummer. I'm gonna say it's not a drummer. Well, okay. What record would be a bass player, a guitar player, and, what and a piano be? player? Is that Dolo Coker? No, he wears glasses. Oh, uh, and I don't think he's on a P Pablo record. He's on yeah, Xanadu. He yeah, he's on Xanadu. Oh, oh, maybe I'm mixing it up then. Um, all right. So he plays drums. Yes. I don't know. Never, I don't think you'll ever get him. He's on Who a is, lot of Pablos. Who is he? No, I would never guess that. Okay. And then I just sold two of these, but I think I'm going to at least, I know I have this one and I got this one. Cool. Okay. And then I have upgrade copies. So I'm going to, I have three of these records, so I'll probably put them in the auction, but, uh, all these Pat uh, Martino records on on Muse. Yeah, I've never seen that one. This is this is in this. this Look like this guy didn't listen to his records. Okay, but by the looks of these records, yeah. this is um this is excellent. This is probably the best one. Look at the lineup he's playing with. Mm -hmm. This is good. Cool. cool. 
actually, this one is just him in a uh, electric piano. Gil Gold Goldstein. This is very good. No, I think the only one I know that has a booklet is the um, the this one's for Blanton. Rob, yeah. do you know other ones with booklets? No, I've never come across another Pablo with a booklet. And then I uh, this is a, a cheap Warner title, but I decided to pick it up. So I don't know how this one is. I usually see it for cheap. Okay. Tom Warner Brothers. We're playing with these guys. Uh, oh, wait. I do. And I picked up uh, volume three. Found a copy of Wildflowers. Cool. Volume three. And then another non jazz record. I, I had a mint copy of this with the sash and everything, but I sold and regretted it. So I found another House of the Holy Monarch pressing with RL on both sides. So I'm very anxious to listen to this. Nice. I had someone wanted it really badly and gave me a good price. Yeah. For a mid copy, both cover and it had the sash. Comes with a sash. This doesn't have the sash, but beautiful condition. Okay. Now this is the killer shit. This is the killer stuff. Today I found a probably third pressing of Bitches Brew. Mm -hmm. This will go in the auction. I have an OG. Uh, Columbia 2 Eye of it. This the cover's not so good, but the records are minty, minty niceness. So that's nice. a, this is a 1970 pressing. Okay. Nice. Okay. That Duke, will probably what you, Duke, what do you think of that? <laughs> okay, and I've shown this. I found this at the flea market. Oh, uh, is that clean? It's the the record is VG plus plus. But it has that the, the sticker on it. Yeah. And this, I'll tell you right now, and I said it, I think, before. This does not go for crazy money. Right. While it's still cheap, do yourself a favor and go get an OG copy of this. Yeah. Because the lineup is killer, and it is by far the best Jimmy Smith Blue Note record. Easy. No, maybe, maybe not. What what are you going to challenge it with? There are other titles that have lineups that have killer horn sections. No, I'm telling you, I'm talking the music. This is just good. It's not him being flashy. It's good. It's that's what I'm saying. There's one. There's there's a few of those those early ones where it's not a trio, Jimmy Smith. It's like him with a bunch of horns. I'm just saying, like he has, like, horn, he has horns on this. Here's the reason I that's say what I'm it. saying. No, it's I'm just. Saying. Hold on, my opinion. All right. The reason this is good, Lee Morgan's on here in Lee Morgan Wales. Yeah, well, that, that is cool. So why I'm saying this, why it's cheap, get this record. You won't do yourself a service and have it. Be good. What's the yeah. label on it? Is it what's the address on that? New York. Okay. Both sides? Yep. Has a P in uh past nice. last thing. Cool. It has RL stereo. I mean RVG. <laughs> New York on both sides. This is just killer. I again, you shouldn't be paying more than forty dollars for this record. Maybe more if it's a minty minty condition. Okay, this I picked up from Safari. This is a probably a second pressing. Sounds excellent. It's a big band. But avant garde big band, you know. Good. Who else is on this? Here's the back cover. You yeah. got your in a here's a nice uh yep. Um, who's on here? You got your uh Richard Williams, who I think is a kind of under the radar trumpet player. I think he only put out one record as a leader. I have it, I have a reissue of it. Jimmy Heath, Clifford Jordan, um, Garrett Brown, Curtis Fuller. It's it, it's good. Good record. Yeah, I've streamed that before. Yeah, I, I think it's available as a pure pleasure reissue. Shout out to uh, Brian at Fluffy Records. He I think he picked that up in the past year and he was saying how good it was. Yeah, it's a good uh, dude. Get it while you can. Brian, I think Brian was saying he picked up that and he picked up there's another there was another music ink one that he got that I like 
it, it's my preferred one, but he was saying that that mute that one is even better. Well, I, it, I it's, it, that one's big. That has a big band like theme to it. Yeah. But it's a little different. But the it's the ringer. The ringer is titled featuring music Inc. No, it's not, ringer. Ringer. it's not the ringer. It's not the ringer. It was another Strata East title. Okay. All right. Well, a lot, of, a lot of his stuff says like his live at Slugs is Music Inc. Yeah, I have that. Yeah, I have part one. Okay, before I get to the two heavy hitters I picked up today, I got this in the mail from Amazon today. Yeah, this is that British uh, reissue of this record, and I just cleaned it, um, so I haven't listened to it yet. But mm -hmm. this is this is eighteen dollars on Amazon right now, so I suggest people pick it up. So this reissue on um, what is that? Ace. Right? Aces. Yeah, Ace <laughs> Records. No, it's that. Um, he's like the British uh, version of um, of what? like Sam Records or whatever. Okay. So eighteen eighteen dollars on Amazon. Get it right now, guys. We sold out. We sold out that one copy of that Glenn Hall record. Not bad. That's All right. Silly. Here's the two killer killer you you wish you dream for finding when you go to a record store and you have a dream this is the dream come true uh these are beat up covers but the records are in excellent condition so al's cold train um on 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 uh, universal consciousness so i have the one i have is the superior viaduct reissue that came out mm -hmm. like in 2017 this is on this is an OG came out as a impulse ABC. Okay. Okay. And then this I'm telling you right now, I'll I cleaned and listened to this. Is Patau. This is not an OG. This is a neon label. Okay. Minty, minty fresh. Yep. And Comparing this to the verb by request, which sounds great, there's no comparison. This thing sounds insane, the OG. Mm -hmm. And to let you know something, someone picked me up a copy of this. I think it might have the original label with a beat up cover. So when I get it in my pause, I'll probably put that in the in my next auction. But I'm telling you right now. K pal Pata. This this the it it doesn't even compare to the verb by request. Oh. It, it's I'm telling you right now. Well, do you are you level matching properly, Rob? <laughs> Dude. Has a halfway decent uh no, I, I, here's here's how I do it. I have a selection of tuning forks. I bang them. What is the job? <laughs> <laughs> this is insanely good. the The verb by request, great, but this is a different different experience altogether. Yeah, I, I believe it. Um, I have but, uh, I I have the those neon impulse. I think I have my. I'm, I'm almost positive these are the same like plates they use to press the OG, because this is only like what. Three years difference? Is it four years difference? Uh, well, yeah, probably. I mean, I don't know exactly, but I mean, like those weren't were those mastered by Van Gelder? I don't think so. No, no, no. These, these were mastered by Van yeah. Gelder. Um, it was recorded I'm, in her basement, man. This record was recorded in her basement. Yeah, I have. I have, I have this, and I revisited this recently because I was talking with Valley on the Discord. Because I think an OG came up for a reasonable price. Um, and I was like, maybe I'll get it. Um, but I have a copy of this. On, yeah. I have, uh, I have that too. I have it on this label. And I played it. And it sounds, you know, maybe the OG sounds even better. But this sounds so ridiculously well, I, good. That I was I was like, I'm just going to keep this. It's too well, good. does it have Van Gelder in the dead box? No, I don't, think, I don't think this does. I don't think these labels I do. have. I have the AB, uh, Impulse ABC label yeah. with yeah. Van Gelder and the Dead Wax. It sounds great. Yeah. But, but anyway, the point is, is, and I think, I actually think this label came out before the Green Bullseye. Yeah, think, the Green Bullseye. 
the green yeah. bullseye came out in 74 73 74 so i think this is slightly earlier and this was i think a short-lived version yeah like a year maybe so but they're good they're good um i'm telling you i'm a different person than i was two hours ago <laughs> after listening to this all right that that's pretty much it what I, oh did i ever show yeah i did on the jazz bombs those two uh ESP discs I found. I yeah. finally listened to them. Show that change addiction. The, the Giuseppe, isn't it like Giuseppe? Some Giuseppe Logan. Okay, or something? I'm going to tell you something right now. Yeah, I was under the impression that this would melt your face because it, it is melted. literally melting someone's face on the cover. Yeah, it, it isn't. In fact, it is free jazz, but Giuseppe is playing like in a more coherent kind of way this is a both actually this is a really enjoyable record in fact i had talked to uh the in groove and he always felt like he's never heard a good uh, esp disc this thing sounds great it's really well recorded what do you mean he didn't you mean in terms of like audio quality audio quality okay they, they do vary i have some really good sounding ones and some not great sounding ones so this sounds like they're in the room with you. That's how yeah. good of a recording this is. And this isn't a crazy record. Yeah. This is it is free jazzy, but it's it's like there's musician, the instrumentation and the playing is just a very enjoyable listen. It's nothing crazy. And then this is a little more out there, but I can I would like to get I know there's another Giuseppe uh, ESP disc record. Yeah. This is good. And I know if you go read his story, he lived a good long life. But I think he played on the was playing on the street and stuff like that. But um it is a, it is a mono. Uh, this is both of these are mono. Mono. Yeah. Cool. But this, this is a case where it, it's so excellent sounding. This is really good. Yeah, well, both all my records will be straight to hell. Okay, so when you go shopping with a Jim Record Collector News, yeah, he, he oftentimes buys. He's a, a perfect example of why you should use Discogs <laughs> and check your Discogs before you buy something. Because I've literally every time I go out with Jim, he buys a record for the third or fourth time, and not only does he buy a record for the third or fourth time. Typically, he buys like a white label promo for the second or third time. So this, I don't want. To, I don't want to show how much you paid for this. It was too much. I'll just cover it. So I accidentally picked up this record from our stack. This Jane's Addiction. Right. OG Jane's Addiction. So that's not a cheap record. No, not at all. A great record though i love the band bought it saw it had to buy it you so you I actually act took it home i accidentally have a jane's addiction record as a hostage but that well, led are you to keep it or sell it well that led me into my own jane's addiction where i found that i i have this one hold, hold on i'm gonna make you big if i could get my thing to, to work there's another one. It's an OG. I think it's sealed. Can you hold it up again? Well, Jim, there's a good way to tell if it's sealed. Here's the problem. Show the opening of the record. I bought it at Amoeba. Amoeba, back in the day, Amoeba would put strapping tape, shipping tape, so that you couldn't open it up. So there's shipping tape on it. I don't think I can open I don't think I can get the shipping tape off. It may not be a seal, well, are, but at any rate, can, I, can I ask a serious? Know. Can I ask a serious question? Yes. Are you five years old? So, do you have an exacto knife or I, a I, box if cutter? Sealed all on sips. Anyway, I've never bothered to open this one because I have this one that I play. This one came in a. Well, you also have this one. This. Yeah, this one came in a white, just a white cover, and it's a white label, but I play it all the time. Turns out this thing is rare as hen's teeth. Why? Thing is, 
Why is that one where? Uh, it's a promo only. I looked on Discogs. There's 200 people want it. 11 people have it. And there hasn't been one for sale since 2021. So anyway, sounds so, great. I can't wait to get my hands on that one, though, too. Well, um, there's a negotiation process. Right. You have, you have to send a hostage right. I think I'm gonna next year next auction. I'm gonna put together. A... Wait, 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 Jeff, Jeffrey. Which album are you asking? Is there a rooster on the label? Are you asking about the Jane's Addiction? No, it's just a Warner. Oh, is that that's on a rooster? By the way, Jim, this is very clean. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> oh yes, here. On one side, Jeff. Here, let me make myself big, and you can take yours out. Right there. Oh yeah. Well, now, Jeffrey, what does that mean if, if there's a rooster on the label? What does that mean? I don't know. First my, pre promo, my promo does not have a rooster on, on the label. Well, he says the rooster means first pressing. What about your other copy? Oh, you it's gotta have it. It's sealed. Do you want to sell? It's sealed by. It was probably open. No. Yeah. Problem. Anyway, I'm look. I'm a collector. Hey, by, by, by the way, by the way, this has a side sticker. Yeah. Nice. Oh, I love that. Is that the Tipper Gore sticker? No. Well, maybe. Yeah. 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 Could be an early Tipper Tipper Gore. Does early. that add value? Hey, Jeffrey. Does it add a value to it? If it has the Tipper Gore sticker. Yeah, Coming Down the Mountain, man. What a great song. But anyway, I love that band, James. Yeah, but, but, you know, this one has got the stamp. Yeah. Oh, the stamp. oh wow. Do you, hey, do you want to sell this? No. Okay. I'm not a seller. I'm a collector. No. I do, want to sell, I do want to sell some. Uh, Frank Zappa. I'm going to put lots, together a Zappa bundle. Lots of Frank Zappa. I'm trying to get him to sell lots of Frank Zappa. I have uh, five or six copies of his first three or four records, you know, and uh, I can get rid of one or two. So I I, I'm, I could put together a nice bundle. I have, you know, here, this is, you know, boom. Verve. This one is a. Uh, this is the, the way this. Frank wanted this record to come out like this, but uh, the Beatles wouldn't let him do it, so it came out like this instead, and uh, they just folded it the other way. But Jim, can you show the Verve label again? On the on the rock on the rock side of stuff, is that a typical Verve label? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh. Another one. This one's a this one's a black verve label, and it's um, hmm. sort of censored differently. Uh, this record is censored. He says, uh, I think he says, "Shut your fucking mouth about the length of my hair," and they censor it. Oh right, is that a, is that an earlier one then? Yeah, these are all pretty early. Um, but, but a black label is earlier than the blue label, and then. Because it's earlier, they were uncomfortable. They were all censored. No, the first okay. one's got out uncensored. Here, oh, here's okay. an uncensored. Oh, okay, okay. From what I understand, the first ones got out uncensored, and then the censored ones might actually, at one time, the censored were worth more, believe it or not. Huh. There were more uncensored. But anyway, I think it was around the time that it all came out on CD, uncensored. Okay. So whatever. But I have a ton of these records. They're all great condition. I'll put together a bundle. First, maybe three or four. Here. Here's his here's his second record, which was the very first record I ever owned as a kid. Came out in 67. I was yeah. 11 years old. That's a great record. Yeah. Gorgeous early mono in the shrink. Here's a white label promo. You know, I don't I don't know. I mean, I, I actually inherited my dad's Zappa collection, but I haven't really had the interest to dive into it yet. But besides that, I was in a record shop 
um, small record shop in Connecticut. And I walk in and I'm listening and I'm like, it's, I know it's Zappa, but I don't know what record it is. And it got to like the third song. And I went to like the store owner and I was like, like, what is like, what are we listening to? This is awesome. And it was that record. Uh, yeah, it's great. Um, I'm telling you, th when we go out record shopping, he always picks up the Zappa record and he has all the Zappa records. I should go. Actually, I think they're in storage, but I have, I have like eight Zappa records. I think the, the, the one that's most valuable is, I think it's Hot Rats. It's with like the sink. Oh, Isn't that's uh, Waka Jawaka Hot Rats. Yeah, yeah. That's one of my favorites. That's a great record. That's yeah, I have that one. Yeah. That was the very first hot stamper I got from uh, Tom Port. Oh, don't get me started. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, that was the very first one he sent me. If you want to see a very VG looking record, Buy one of those better record hot stampers. You're, they're not for looking at, Mr. Wax. They're for uh, uh, if you ever want to listen to a record with slight noise, buy a better records record. <sighs> how so, much you pay? How much you pay for that, Jim? The um, the Waka Jawaka Hot Rats was at that time it was probably 150 bucks. Okay, well, under not, 200. not too too crazy. But the um. <laughs> So just between you and me, and don't tell anyone from the IRS, but we used to trade ads for his records. I never bought any of them. Oh, hold on. Oh, right now. That's kind of uh, cool. Hey, John, first of all, why did you change your name? Let me know in the comments below. But yesterday I went out with Jim. Yeah, he stole it from me. No, it's in your possession. The ribbon in the chest. That's, that's right. I stole it. You stole he, it. Can you pull out he, the ribbon in the jets that pick, we picked up yesterday? Well, fact, hold on. It, As it, he's it, picking that up, I was watching Westman stream. This is probably, so I guess it's the last time Tom, what's his last name? Port? Yeah. Last time Tom Port was on, he was saying, he was like hinting at a new hot stamper that he found. And it was, he was like, it's a Bill Evans. And I forget what he said, but it was clearly like an OJC that he was saying was the hot stamper. I was like, yeah, they sound really good. Like, come on. Like, he probably is going to charge an insane amount of money because I think his whole business model is he has to buy these records for a reasonable price. So he can't go get a bunch of like, like Robert Lud Ludwig, like Zeppelin twos and do this. Yes, he does. He does. He, he gets 10 Absolutely. of them. And he sells them all. Oh, okay. He creates them and sells them all. I've, I've been very opinionated on Tom Port. And I agree with you, Jonathan. Well, hold There's on. So he gets he gets yeah. ten near mint copies of Led Zeppelin two. So they're not, hold on, they're not near mint. Well, it, to be a hot stamper, like no, you're not buying no, actually, based on scratch yeah, conditions. You're, no, you're actually, buying based on the stamp. Uh, hold on, right now, Mike. No, Every that's hot not stamper, it. That's, first of all, he's okay. not selling hot stampers. He's selling better records. Okay. okay. First, first of all, well, the record typically. Jim, how many of them do you have? 20, 18. Okay, I've looked at all of Jim's. You're not buying near mint records. You're not even close. So right. the, you're buying like the best the, stamper. You're buying the best sounding version of that album. Here's the, the worst best stamper, the best stamped record. Yeah, no, but they, they are is. typically have noise. That's they what it is. If you're not buying based on condition, then what are you buying on? Here's how okay. he does it. It's, the, it's does. the stamper. <laughs> That's no. what he's trying to sell. Here's what it it's is. Not, it's not if it's a VG or VG plus. It's if this sounds better because this stamper is better. So, so here's well, what, yeah. But it's not okay. just that stamper. But wait a minute. It goes. That's what it is. It's much deeper than that. It goes beyond that. It starts there. Okay. It starts with the stamper. Okay. So you go out and you go. This is the stamper that sounds good, and he sends guys out. I need twenty copies of this stamper. Then he gets that, 20 uh, copies the of dead, dead wax number, all the stuff. 20 copies of that dead wax stamper, and he cleans them the proprietary way, and he plays them on a system that is terrible to listen to. It's extremely revealing. It reveals, but he knows how to listen to it. He knows what it'll sound like on your system or my system. It's not anything you want to subject yourself to. It's well, extremely okay. can I, can I... It's way too revealing for people like me to lit to bother with. Can I give you my so that after he spends all that freaking time 
going through all those 20 stampers, he grades them. This is the best out of the 20, and he charges different amounts and he sells Very them. Fine. He's got customers. Yeah. I good. personally, let me let me finish. I would never spend the money on these records myself because it's I can't afford it. It's not my league. I would have a good time doing it myself. Why not? You know, I've got well, three. You did that with Zappa Records, you bought. I do it with Zappa Records. I have but three. I, but here, here, here. I think Tom Port is missing a huge opportunity to make a lot more money, because here's what I do believe Tom Port possesses: his cleaning, the way he cleans records, because the stories I've heard per Jim, and actually someone who has direct knowledge of how the records are cleaned. I heard this person tell the story. I believe that Tom Port does have a unique way of cleaning records that is different than any other version or explanation or way. I think he does clean. as well, but beyond that, I think, nah, I combined, think with, combined with this ultra revealing system that he listens to this shit on, it's not just the cleaning, it's the yeah, system it's the that cleaning. he listens to it on. It's yeah. the well, number one, he doesn't listen to it anymore. Apparently he hires people to do that. And then also, yes, I, I will say, I think, I think, what is it? Um, like syntax, I'm messing up. When I'm saying best stamper, yes, I realize a stamper presses many records. What I am intending to say is the best, like of, yeah, I'm hearing what you're saying. It's of that stamper. So whatever the, the matrix number suffixes, the best pressed of that. So I get that. But I feel like what I'm saying is, is it's not condition. He's listening well, to what the best yeah. pressed record is. And I actually was, uh, that's not totally true. Cause I, I actually thought when um, he was talking about that Bill Evans one, that he was comparing the OJCs. Cause I thought he said, we compared OJCs against all these other ones. And this one was the best. And we found the best one of those. That's what I thought he said, but I could be incorrect. So uh, I thought, we're was, get, we're I thought, get, I thought when yeah, he was, when uh, he was having his team listen, that it wasn't just the same stamper. But what I was trying to say is it's the best pressed which could be stamper or different pressing, um, in his opinion, which I guess here's is using my, this revealing. Here's, here's, this, here's this kind of blue. What All right. Sure. So which, 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 don't show the label yet. Which one do you think that kind of blue is? The side one is an A+, plus and side two is an A++++. Plus plus plus. Okay. Mike, without knowing what label that, show the cover, please. I have Jim. no clue. I have no clue. Just make and a guess. You have the ability to make a guess. It's very well, nice. It's in ter I mean, well, the thing is, like, in, ter in terms of collector value, the original 6i from 59 is going to be the most valuable. So I would want to say it's that. But I know that he doesn't just do that because he might say, actually, the 1960 6i with the CBS could be the one that right. sounds nice. You want to guess which one? And that one's that cheaper. Is. And it's, it's very convenient that that one's cheaper, too, because then it's easier for him to buy and then hype up. Which he may not be doing, but if he was going to sell snake oil, you would do that. So, I mean, it's like it's a matter of trust in these things, and nobody can verify what he's doing. You basically have to trust him. You you could verify it. Do it yourself, man. Go find uh, this well, one. Yeah. So, so go basically what you're saying is and I should go out and buy a dozen. I should go out and buy a dozen. Well, you know, it's on, one on, to do what he does. He goes out. This is theoretically in the most basic sense. He goes out, he buys a bunch of pressings. He narrows it down to the best pressings. He keeps buying those. And then he keeps narrowing it down, narrowing it down. This is the best stamper. And then of the stamper, this is the best pressing. For me to do that, it's going to cost a lot of money. So what he's saying is, is that the cost it's of doing not money. Is it's, not, it's not even money. It's time. It's Well, it's also time. money. It's also money. And Way time is money. Time. Yeah, yeah, and time is money because you're paying people yeah. that time. I would do it. I started doing it. And yeah. Said, Forget it. Yeah. Well, anyway, nobody's going to do that. Nobody's going to go out and buy 30 copies of Kind of Blue and then A, B them and do this. Hold, hold on. Let's but if you want, it, but so, so basically because nobody's going to check him, he could say whatever he wants and he could say it very convincingly. And he might be, he might be honest with this. Absolutely, and this he could do that. But Jim, you're but saying you do what, this. What you definitely it? didn't go out and buy 30 copies of Kind of Blue and do this on a revealing system, right? So you have to trust him. Oh, no, no. I know the guys that went out and bought them and sold them to him. Well, that doesn't matter because you have to listen to them. 
okay, the, he, they could have sold them to him and he could but have not For you to confirm he, this, he you would have to do the same thing, which means you would have to buy 30 copies of this record and then do it just to confirm that what he's doing is legit. Because he could sound very convincing and say, I bought all these pressings. Well, let me ask he's you this. Really listening or let me ask you this, listening. doctor. Professor, let me ask you this. Why does it have to be 30? What if you did it with three and your ears went, whoa? And then you could take your time and continue with the 30. But what if three showed you that there was a distinct difference just in three? Because and kind of blue, kind of blue, kind of blue has have to do. How many times has kind of blue been reissued? He do, he has how to. Many do how many times has kind of blue been reissued? I have this no, shit. I have this no idea. Nor do guys. I care. This so, shit's really good right now. Well, how I'm just long saying, have you been collecting records? How long have you been collecting records? Don't go there. So let's stay on topic. Let's stay on, no, no, no. Five Jim, years. Jim, let's been stay on listening. topic. You're he saying you you have three copies of Kind of Blue when that record has been reissued. I don't know, but I would I would assume it's no, around. No, 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 no. I've, I've been listening to Kind of Blue for 30 years, okay? I've yeah. had numerous copies of Kind of Blue. I, yeah, I don't think not, it matters. We're talking about what Tom Port does for his methodology. All I can tell it's you not is not about how many times you've heard this record. His methodology, I'm telling you, yes, he goes out and he'll decide that this, this is, free. is, this free, is yeah. the best yes, one. Yes, and then he'll tell you that that's the best one. And there's no way to confirm it unless you go do the same thing. So do which it. nobody is going to do. Nobody is going to go out and buy 30 copies and do. You this. don't have to buy 30 to prove it. You only have to. Well, buy I'm saying 30, four. but nobody's going to go out and buy four copies. What I have? What are you fucking talking about, man? Are you out of your mind? One, you're missing, you're, two, Jim, you're missing three, my point. Four, Jim, Jim, you're missing five. my point. You're missing my point. I don't understand. There's I, no way to confirm what he's doing is right. The only That's way what I'm saying. you have to trust him. Yes or no? That's the point. What do you to trust him to say he's that, is, that this copy is the best hot stamper copy? You have to trust him for that because you're not oh, going to wait a run, minute. Wait a minute. You're wait not going to run the, the right, result. Back up. That's not what he's saying. That's not what he's saying. That is the intent. In order to thing. say that, you when have somebody to buys, when somebody buys a kind of blue, that, you have to Jim, when, when somebody buys a kind of blue for what he's selling, the intent is that that is the best sounding copy. That is what they think they're buying. Here, I buy. I, let me tell you this. It is. That's what it is, Jim. It is the best copy that he has right now. He's, right. He's been selling them. There, it's the best copy he has right now. Yeah. Look, my. Let me tell you how it works. I got my uh, hot stamper of Led Zeppelin II. Uh, I traded for it. I didn't buy it. It was $980 they want for it. Like, okay, I'm going to trade for it. I'll give you ads for the rest of your life. He said to me, you know what? I've got another one. It's a little, it's a, it's, it's a little noisier, but it actually sounds better. I, I'm, I'm selling it for 800 Why don't you take that one instead? I took that one for 800 It's all I could tell you is it's this isn't this isn't biased because I pay, I bought it. I didn't buy it. I got it for nothing. It sounds better than the other copies that I have. It sounds I it sounds better than uh, the other three. Can I, can I, the other can three I, Led Zeppelin twos that are Robert Ludwig's that I have. Can I can, I can I can now, I can I right. let me well, tell you what I mean but I'm hold not on, you guys have been you know, hold on. Let me just hold tell on. you what Let's happened. Take a little break. Let's take a little break. All right. Okay. As someone who has no uh, better records in this game, and, I, and and please understand, he's being passionate. Jim's being passionate about it. I have listened. I, hold on. You're, you're just, you have a lot of bent up white people anger. Hold no, on. for me, uh, for let me, me is, is, I no, just hold on. Just really quick. I understand his business model. And I see there's flaws in it, and I'm just pointing those out. You could disagree, the but there are is that you flaws. think selling. Oh, well, guys, stuff. let me just say there is. It's oh, like oh, this is jazz final lovers. Yeah, oh, right. Right. I'm gonna remove. There, are, there are flaws in his there, in his. There's another argument, and the flaw there's is another not argument going on there. Hold on, hold on, guys. Let me just say something, Mike. I'm on your side of this, okay? But I have listened to Jim's better records. They do sound really good. In Better. fact, I have there's a John Coltrane Basha that I thought I had a very similar copy to. His it does sound good. 
here's my issue with the better records. You, if you're going to buy some, it really goes to what, what is this record worth? The real worth of well, let me finish. The worth of this record is how much someone's willing to pay for it. So no one's holding a gun. Going back to Mark Lassman, you, I'm on your side, Mark Lassman, but no one's holding a gun to any of these people's heads to buy these records. Look, as a side note, I believe Tom Port is a snake oil salesman. I believe I that the only thing Tom Port has a value is the way he cleans his records. As okay. someone who has listened to and held one, several of them in his hands, the records look barely VG plus. I don't me. even want to look. I I'm not I'm not saying I'm not using. I'm not name calling. I don't. He may not be a snake oil salesman. He may he think. Is. But hold on. I'm just saying he may not. In his mind, he might think I am listening to these. These are the best sounding ones, and I feel confident in this. What I'm saying is, is that there are flaws in this methodology. And I realize, Jim, you have a bunch of these, and for you, they sound great. And Here's, but, but there is unquestionably, this is not scientific. Unfortunately, it's not. unfortunately, it's, you it just have, isn't. Unfortunately, you don't understand his business model. That's the, that's what's going on. Well, here but, but, hold on. His he business model is what? Tell me, so tell me what it is, Jim. If I don't understand, his it. business model is this. Because a lot of people seem to understand it because they because he, he made a fortune off. I got I got this copy of Bahia from him, right? Okay. All Bahia. right. So Bahia. now I go on his website and I see he's got another copy of Bahia. I want to check that out. He'll give me in credit. 100%, I'll send it back to him. He'll clean it again and sell it or something. And I'll get that other Bahia and I'll check it out and see how that goes. If it's better, you can buy it and get 100% credit for the one that you already have. Now, have I ever done that? No, because I don't I don't really care that much. You're saying most people buy records from him don't pay up front? No, they pay up front. You buy the. I bought this record. Okay. Well, you're saying I, you're saying it's credit. It. So what are we talking it's about? Back for me in a heartbeat. For yeah, a but nobody's gonna do that, Jim. Yes, they do it all the time. <sighs> Nobody does that. Give me a break. They're well, bought on. into hold this. On. Oh, uh, hold on, Mike. You're I, buying I, from him in the first oh, place. No, you're my, 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 this my, is my, my, going to sound good. Hey, well, hold on, my, you buy the first one. I'm sorry. That seems like there's a bias there. If you're already considering buying this thing. I feel like you're already biased that you're going to want to like it better. Okay, well, maybe well, you I'll, are, but, but yeah. the reality. Okay, let me tell you about you my spend first four hundred dollars on a record, Jim. That's that record is not four hundred dollars. My what record? This I didn't say. Well, whatever it is, I mean his records are off the chart, and they're okay. like fifteen dollar records. Here's my experience with my first experience, and that's it. I'll stop. I was as as uh, Senegal suspect as you are. But I was a little bit conflicted because I was hoping he would turn into a, a real customer. I, want, I, I did kind of want it to work. So here's my thing. Let's do a trade. I'll give you an ad in exchange for a $150 record. Fine. He sends me Waka Jawaka Hot Rats. And I'm listening to that record since 1972. I have multiple copies. I have white label promos of it. Okay? I have a white label promo. I put it on. And I'm depressed because there's no way his record is going to be better than the one I already have. There's no okay. way. All right. And if it is, it ain't worth 175 bucks. Okay. I get his record two days later in the mail. I put it on the exact same system, the exact same. I don't know about the levels, but here's what I did. I put it on, and within seconds, I said out loud, what did he put on this record? In my brain, he put magic juice on it or something. Okay. I, it didn't make sense to me at all. It was so all right. Harvey Kubernick, who writes for me, was there. He doesn't give a shit about the way. I don't think he listens. He listens on, on he doesn't care how shit sounds. We, we looked around. I go, I can't believe this, Harvey. I had two different versions of Eric Clapton's first record where he's just sitting there in a chair or something. And okay. they were different stamper numbers. Okay. I played them. Harvey and I played them. We could not believe how different those two stampers sounded. Okay. That was my introduction. Would I pay for them? No. 
I would never. Well, pick different them. stampers are different than than oh, different uh, guys, on the guys, team. Guys, hold on, field. you're saying the same shit again. Let me just step in again and say so that's that. it. Okay. Well, anyway, I I respect I, I, Jim, on. and if Jim, if Jim says that all of those records that he has are legit, then I will. Oh, hold on, my my. Jim, Jim, hold on. Can yeah. you both? Can you both just shut your trap and let me say something? Here's the deal, Mike. I understand your passion. And again, I'm on your side of this. But what you're failing to understand is this. Jim had two copies of Waka Haka Baka, right? Mm -hmm. One of them was not cleaned by Tom Port. The other one was cleaned by this, what I believe is a really good way to clean records. Now, if Jim sent his other copy to Tom Port to have clean and then he would listen to them together, I had kind of have the feeling that they might sound more similar. Okay, the other the other thing is this says this says hot this says hot stamper right there, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh -oh. Boom. How much is this record worth now? Nothing. 17. Not this yeah, stupid, no, but that but again little this card. With, how much does it ca cost to make a card? I think I'm not kidding. I don't know. I, I guess, look. The only place I could sell this is back to the I, I'm so I just, I just so feel like I myself out of the stream. Hold on. Yeah, Here's okay. a perfect example. I'm going to put all this stuff together. Okay. CJ saying $200 bottle of wine. Exactly. No one's holding a gun to these people's heads. They have the income. I'm not arguing that. But, 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 but hold on, Mike. You're acting like people are innocent. Mike, there's two record stores in your town, right? There's one that sells the records at a fair price. There is the other who sells the records for 30% more than he, they should be selling them for. We we run into this problem daily. Stop. Original. Stop. Robert so, Ludwig. Hold on. We, we, we go through this. The, I go regularly to about eight different record stores here in L.A. Mm -hmm. There are some. Jim and I went to one record store the other day where this guy literally sells his records for 40% over what they should be going for. In mm -hmm. fact, I looked at, I asked for a record off the wall that was sealed. It was a sealed copy of Pharaoh Sanders, Deaf, Dumb, and Blind. He had it on the wall for how much, Jim? $250. <laughs> I go, I'm interested. In the guy was begging me to buy the record from him. What price would you pay for it? Because obviously his business model of selling records for 40% over what they go for is not working for him. He yeah. hasn't found the right customer base that commands that they have the income to go in and buy them. This is exactly what Tom Port is doing. He found an angle. He's capitalizing on the angle. He's built a brand. I just feel like, I, I, I think for me, per, this, is, this, this, is my pers this is my personal thing. And Jim, I hear what you're saying. And I don't, I'm trying, you know, I didn't mean to be res like disrespectful and like shout no, at you before. I so didn't that at all. it's just, I am passionate. So, so know, much whatever. about you to me privately. <laughs> it's not even funny. But I guess my point is, is that like, it seems, and I'm just reiterating something I said earlier, so I won't be long winded, but it just seems like it is, you have to trust this guy and some people do, and it works out fine for them or it doesn't. And they're still, you know, people are still happy. I don't know where I was going with this, but I just, I feel like it's, it, it, if, it, if it works for you, that's great. I just feel like, I don't know. I just feel like some people just want that little freaking thing that he prints up, Jim. <laughs> they well, want that, that in his collection. That, that could very well be. But for me, I've got about 18 or 19 of those records. Yeah. When I really want to, you know, listen. Yeah, when I really want to listen to that record, I play. And do you well, do you think and his hit rate? Do you think his hit rate is a hundred percent? What do you mean? Uh, hit rate is a hundred percent. Do you think that he gets it? He, you think if you buy something from him, you know, for that much money, his comp like he's confident enough to put it up for hundreds of dollars that it's pretty much like. Well, I believe oh. I have no doubt that he's put that, that much time and energy into. I don't think that he's just like okay, let's just clean it. I do believe that he play grades every single fucking record. Hey, he you know what? I'm challenging you, Lastman. What's the bridge? I'll think, buy it. Tell I me the, where it is. I think the criticism is easy to say that. Lassman, come on over. Let's listen. That's it. Yeah, I, I, I feel like what I feel like why this why is this it worth the money? 
if you've got the money, then it is. I don't, but I had the ads. As soon as I traded him for an expensive record, he stopped. I think, I think, um, and also he may bias you, like he might give you certain things no. but over other people because he wants to, you know, I'm gonna tell them. you right now, Jim is not a fool. And here's how Jim got over on better records. Okay. He didn't pay any money for any of these records. Please understand this, people. He's gotten 20 records from this guy without giving him one red cent. But I think I think, I think the, for me. I think the interesting thing, and I'm trying to do this, and I'm probably not the best, I'm definitely not the best. I'm the imperfect messenger here, but it's not about saying this is bullshit. There is a technical argument about what his sales model is and his methodology that I think causes problems that. with verification which if you're going to do a scientific thing and charge people that much money to be able to not be able to verify it i feel like is a problem oh, okay. maybe i'm being mind. really sensitive but i feel like that's why i wouldn't be that interested in his stuff because i just there feel really like is, are there, trusting this guy there really is only one way to verify it is to listen to him mike yeah. and i maybe yeah, but against you know all what? the other hold ones on. hold on mike, no, no, no. hold on yes. mike so Mike, you're telling Mike. me the top three. If he sent you any one of those top three, Jim, you'd be able to tell the difference? You don't know. You have no oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I have a way to fix All those stampers could sound the same, I, Hold on, Mike. I have a way to fix this. Not stampers. Pressings. Mike, I, keep Mike, stampers, I have a pressing. way to I have a way to make you not be so questionable about this. Because he's saying one is better well, than well, the Mike, other. Mike, let me say what I want to say. Jim, will you send a copy of a better record that Mike has no, a version you. of? Yes. Sure. No, now you're turning, you're saying no. Here's, here's the thing. But that here's doesn't mean thing. anything, Rob. That's yes, not what does. I'm arguing. Hold on. That's, yes, it does. That's not yes, his argument. I'll tell his you why argument it does. has nothing to do with it. I'll tell you why it does mean something. He did it with Patrick. He did it with Mazzy. He sent them copies of the better records to Who listen did, Jim? to. Jim did, yes. Yeah, but that's... But, I don't, I'm you not, think, look, you you think, Jim will probably send me something and it does sound better than okay, my okay, hold on one second. Green label. Do you think, <laughs> oh, what? You That's think, but, but no, the point is, is that you would have to send me the exact same record oh, that I have God. of the same pressing and stamper. And I don't know if we could do that. And then additionally, just because yours sounds better than mine doesn't mean yours is the best one. There could be more. Of course. That's not what he's saying. I that's think that's what saying. people people think when that's they buy saying, when they buy a VG plus plus plus. plus what's, what's what's better? What Mike, so what is it? What is the top ranking? What's that's his top what ranking? What's his top ranking? His, his ranking is anchored to to what the th there's a the baseline is not based on some neutral thing. It's based on other of the same record, right? It's based on his ears and his experience. No, so the baseline it. to say one is better than the other. Right, you're not you're not comparing kind of blue to Led Zeppelin. You're comparing kind of blue to another kind of blue and figuring out which is the best one of those. Yes, correct. So what I'm saying is, is that you would need to listen to so many different versions, and of those versions, find the stampers and listen to multiple of those to say this is a white hot versus this is a gold or whatever the fuck he says. That's what he does. He, he now, presents, I, but he presents things like this is the I, best. And what I'm saying is that up on, hold on a second, Mike. I understand okay. what you're saying. I understand yeah. your problem. I think your problem is, is that you think he's saying every single record that he sells is the best version of that record. Now, how could there be when, a thousand, if he sold a hundred versions of a record, how can they all be the best copy of that record? They yeah. can't all, all right, be I'll the be right same back. thing. But okay, bye. That's what I think. No, he, yeah, Mike, Mike has an issue he's been dealing with, so okay. he's not leaving because he doesn't want to argue with Jim. Okay, let's all just agree that there he has a customer base. I don't know how big it is, but he I, to me his customer base is no different than Chad's customer base. It's no different than the Ingroup's customer base. Right. It's no different than anyone who is loyal to a brand. What and and again, no one's holding a gun. Mike's highlighting comments while he's not here. Um, and it is no different than any of these. No one's holding a gun to anyone's head to buy a better record. I believe the guy's a snake oil salesman. I'm not passionate about my feeling about it like Mike is. 
but I do believe because I've talked to other people than Jim that this dude has a cleaning method that is good. Problem is he thinks that he, I believe if it really is as good as I hear it is, he should be selling that and not better record, better the best pressing of a record. Because I honestly believe if Jim gave him all his other copies of Waka Jawaka, or I'm, what, I'm mispronouncing it, and clean them, they will sound better. I promise this. And in, in Lastman, you can have the opinion that there's no cleaning process that cleans records better. I, I think if someone can show me both by... Remember uh, when, when we sat down with that, uh, we put a record in the Kermis and you couldn't believe it. Okay, no, okay, so I have an example, which I didn't... I ended up not posting a video of it. I brought an OG copy of Hank Mobley's No Room for Squares or whatever it's called, an OG pressing that I got for a dollar that looked like shit. And I recorded Kermis doing his process with it. That that dude cleaned the record eight times. You know what? It sounded better after he did it. Yeah. And I had cleaned it in my Humming Guru. So... Hey. Can I so, respond? Oh, to you? Uh, so I do have personal experiences of witnessing a, a guy claim that he has the best way of cleaning records, take a record and make it sounding better. I've witnessed it. I've seen it. I've seen the light people. So I honestly do believe Tom Port from hearing someone who is this close to his cleaning process, which inv inv involves herbs and juices and lotions and oils and unguents, unguents, you know, and love and and people of faith praying and lighting candles and burning now, incense. What Jazz Man Maniac says is true, and it's disgusting. It's just hold on, hold it on. just makes me yeah. That's the way they talk about the way he puts down other people's stuff is stupid. I'm I I'm a firm believer there is a cleaning method. That like the like discovering a solar system or a star or an amoeba or a species of animal deep below the ocean surface that we have not yet come to contact with. I, I I've heard I've heard what is uh, no I do not think his uh, records will hold value to anyone but him. You can only sell them back to him. They're not worth anything to you because. You can find the same record out there for twenty bucks. Uh, did you easy. just? Hey, J hey, um, Mike, did you just hear what I yammered? So no. I have proof, video proof, that I took that no that Hank Mobley record, the first pressing I got for a dollar. I cleaned it in my humming guru. It sounded eh. I took it up to Seattle with me. The Kermis guy cleaned it with his process. Mm -hmm eight times and the record sounded better mm -hmm. after he went through his whole process. Mm -hmm. So but based on that, going through that with a guy who claims he has the best way to clean records, this Kermis dude mm -hmm. and, and Jim owns a Kermis. And then hearing people describe Tom Port's cleaning process and what they do. I honestly believe his secret is cleaning a record as clean as it can get. And it's sounding better. That's what I believe. I mean, who knows? But but I believe he's a snake oil salesman. I believe he's a mar every success. You yeah, but I, I don't even think you have to like. I, I feel like when people say it's uh, bullshit, he's hey. a snake oil salesman. I just feel like there's better ways to just point out the flaws in his business model and methodology. That's all I'm saying. It's just like like I don't even want to name call. I just feel like he may honestly feel like no, what he's doing he's is a, a service. I think he's a, he's and, trash. I don't think he's fine. a good person. He but is not. I just feel like I don't want I don't want to like I feel like judging his motives without really knowing him is I can't do that. All I could say is that from what I've seen on TV, he's very, yeah, he absolutely is passionate about what he believes in. He talks circles and people around you know around like his you know selection process and all this stuff and he sounds really good. But it's just in terms of like 
I, I just, I don't know, like, if you can nuance things or if it, like, Jim, for example, like, maybe, like, it's just the stamper. Maybe, like, the nuance between the different pressings of the stamper aren't that great. Now, Jim, you, you're saying that you have multiple pressings of the same stamper and his sound superior in a way that is noticeable on your system? Correct. So I don't know. I mean, so, I, so I, I take Jim, I take Jim as a data point for sure. I, I know that we were yelling before, but like Jim has, I I'll that. let you know, people. So, so there Jim might be, so there might be some answer. validity to this, but yeah. I just have an issue with like I just feel like my turntable is worth. He more honestly than my car. was more open to like his process and spoke about stampers and was more revealing about this stuff as opposed to being he's secretive. Like he he. I heard that he actually scratches out stamper numbers in the dead wax because no, he doesn't want people to know. Is that not true? No, no, no. no. I saw. I've actually I copied down those. I'll give you the stamper numbers. Some of them records. Well, that's what I heard. I heard that. No, but he doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't publicly state what they are, except I think he he said there was a Beatles. Um, there was he's a Beatles one. He's KG. He's you know he's whatever. I what I like him. I know him. I, I actually don't really know him, but I've. Talk to a lot of people that have worked for him and they kind of get his attitude and everything. And they all like seem to put down, they all love to put down Chad. Chad's never done a good record in his life. And then I'll say something like just innocent, like, well, what about this record that I kind of like of Chad's? And they'll go, oh yeah, that's a good one. So they're the kind of people that like to make these blanket statements. But then if you bust them on it, they'll, with, in a, without a heartbeat, just. All right, hold, on, hold on. And just to understand, we all know Mike very well, but we don't know. This is the first time Jim's been angry on a stream. Just to understand, Strip, you don't challenge Jim on better records or peg farts, right? There's a uh, dog farts. It's uh, French bulldog farts in particular. It's like a punch in the teeth. I think we're, I, honestly, I do believe Jim might not think he's the best dude in the world. But he has a brand. He's created a brand that has an audience. If you have the money and you don't want to spend the time doing it yourself, buy the records from well, him. Look, look, I'll, get a, I'll give you a good for instance. Dino's, this dude, Dino, most generous person in the world. He gave us some free lemons from his lemon trees. That's, that's right. a good. That's a good dude. Tom Port, not a good dude. He doesn't give away the free free records. I haven't mastered any records. I only listen to them. I'm a listener. Hey, hey listen, Joe, we barely accepted you. I think we're all fine. Th thanks for thanks for the views, guys. I was waiting for someone other than me to look like. Hey, that. if you're if you're watching, remember to do the thumbs up or the thumbs down. <laughs> oh, hold on. I endorse this comment. <laughs> so he's someone's waving from their front door. Oh, I think he's hanging outside your house. Uh oh. That's hey, how hot? How hot was it in the valley today? Uh, currently, I gotta, I gotta go. We have we have we have the marine layer layer currently at seventy eight degrees, dude. It's, it's like cool. fifty here. The marine layer sitting over the coast. I, I mean, this honestly, again, I, I'm not going to say it anymore. Wow, he lives in actually. Dino lives in a part of the valley in L.A. that often during the winter is the hottest place in the country. Right now it's what is it like fifty nine degrees here because of the marine layer? It's crazy. Sixty one, because there's a big giant thing sitting over the coast. Um. Uh, I I don't know. I haven't heard. Has anyone heard about the Blue Note Lee Morgan box that they're planning to put out? I have not heard anything. It would have to be a big big announcement for pre ordering. Hey, Zeb, no one cares about Tacoma. Come on, man. Um, we did our OJ Simpson thing at the beginning of the stream, Mark. 
What are you looking at, Jim? Are you going back to the what you were watching before? No, no, no. I, I'm uh, I'm looking at the uh, at the the chat on this. Hey, hey, look! I'll say something here. There's someone who has a site that they sell records on that I believe they price their records way too high. People are there buying those records. We all you know, know we're kind. Of, the the records that Rob sells, I know people that sell for a fortune. Way more than he would. There used to be a place. Well, um, anyway. What now? Say again. No. Uh, CJ, come on over. Listen to some records. Tell me what you think. Period. I mean, seriously, it's all there is to it. It's about the listening. I uh, I'll say this. Jim has an outstanding system. Sounds incredible. It's fun. Any, any record we put on it sounds great. But I have listened to those better records he has. They sound really good. I have some of the ones he has. I'm not saying it's worth the money, and I'm not saying you can't do it yourself. You can. It just takes time. <laughs> I've always wondered, is it is it a tempered climate there, or is there humidity? I've always wondered about Kerbalapistan's climate. Wow. Um. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You'll have to go to his channel to see, John. Yes, I love the Kerbal Apistan comments. Tacoma. Hmm. Well, maybe one day you can escape. There's a good store there, isn't it? Uh, there's a few stores. How many record stores, Zeb, do you have in Tacoma? Turntable Treasures. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Did you sell him an amp? Yeah. Yeah, that was like the only really good amp out of the um, that place. It was the only good amp. Everything else turned out to be a mistake. But that was a good amp. There are three or four in Tacoma. I like, uh, what's his name from Turn Turntable Treasures? And uh, he's got a nice store there. <laughs> Peter. Peter who? He's I think that's the owner of Turntable Treasures in Tacoma. Okay. And Zeb says the only good store, hold on, is high voltage. Do you know that one? Yeah. Don't tell me that Turntable Treasures isn't good because he's been advertising with me since day one. Are you John? Are you the one that bought the album from me? Hey, I bought it again. It's a good album, but you have to admit that part where they're singing together is I could do without that part. Hey, did anyone, I know one person ordered this, order this from Amazon. It's only 18 bucks. John Carter. This is good avant-garde jazz. Hold on. Turntable Treasures is there. I just wasn't a fan of the whole selection. Situate, um. Well, I don't know. Mike's taking care of his dog. I think that's where he's he's gone. But uh, but uh, we might wrap things up shortly because uh, and send people over to chance. You know, I've got to take off. Sherry's time, time to make dinner. Time to make dinner. Yeah, I'll wait till you can. You're fine to go off. I'll wait till Mike comes back. Hi right, everybody. Sorry for uh, being such a better record. Oh, it, dude, it was heated. It was good. All right. It was a, a view, it gets views. Take care, everybody. Bye. Have fun listening to your better records. Yeah, you know what? I noticed, um, Alan, that your um, it didn't get scanned. So usually it'll probably get scanned when it gets into you, your area. So it should probably be there within the next few days. That when you dump like thirty packages at the post office, sometimes some don't get scanned. So I'm sorry about that. I was amazed that a bunch of people got their records like in a day and a half. That was crazy. Um, who else has got a... Um, it's really about them giving him the rights. I don't know. 
I I just I don't know what label that record's on, but I, from my understanding, Warner Brothers is not very open right now to licensing records to people. They rather do it in house. So and 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 second, I would have to think the Sinatra estate would have something to say about that. So that's my opinion. We didn't we didn't mean to make this a whole uh, discussion on how you buy records, Zeb. Um, probably in May sometime. You know, I'm going. I think I already have enough records for another auction, but it's it does take a lot of energy out of me. Um, probably it, towards the end of May, I'm going to Austin for the record show. Anyone going? Let me know. Uh, lots of us will be there. Plenty of opportunity to hang out. I think. Um, you know, I believe a lot of those impulse records sound amazing, sound excellent. So, you know, uh, does Tom Port have a YouTube channel? I don't think so. No, I don't think uh, Publis. I don't think he's a face for anything. Well, now you, uh, so, uh, you know, you got so you, did Zeb, did you get your, did you buy from me this last auction? I don't remember. I don't think so. Last one, I think you did. Well, uh, I don't think Westman likes to have a lot of drama on a stream. So, um, I did. I think people challenged him. A few people did challenge him a little bit. Hey, Rob, I'm, I'm going to jump off. I got to. No, no, I, I, I was waiting. Deal, for you. I got to deal with the dogs. I was waiting. And, um, I was waiting anyway, for you uh, I hope everybody enjoy, enjoyed. Uh, Rob, uh, Rob um, pays me a couple times a year to cause some drama. So, um, this man, should, this should... man, do you hate Jim? It's amazing. Um, I was going to end the stream anyway. I was waiting okay. for you to come back. Thank you, everyone, for showing up. And go over to Chance's live streaming right now. Go watch this. All right, cool. See you guys. All right. Take care. Bye.